Welcome to RC Tech. This is Ritesh Srinivasan. In this video, let's look at sentence transformers. What is sentence transformers? Sentence transformers is a Python framework for state of the art sentence text and image embeddings. Okay. Uh, so we can use this sentence transformers library for actually creating uh, text embeddings for our sentence level embeddings, right? And it can be used to compute sentence or text embeddings for more than 100 languages. Now this can be useful for, uh, you know, semantic uh, uh, similarity. It can be used for semantic search or paraphrase mining. Let's look into uh, sentence transformers with an example. If you are new here and if you like such content, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. So to start with, I would want to show you with an example. So to install sentence transformers, it's very easy. You can create a virtual environment. You can install uh, sentence transformers using pip, right? Only thing is that you need a, uh, uh, what you call hugging face transformers already installed a certain version of hugging face transformers as well as, you know, you require, uh, you need Python 3.6 and PyTorch 1.6.0 and above. Right now, uh, once uh, sentence transformers are installed, let's try out a simple example of what can be done with a sentence transformer. Okay, so this is how you actually import a sentence transformer uh, model. Okay, so this is a paraphrase model. So you, you are creating a model over here. Models, a model is equal to sentence transformer paraphrase uh, this thing. Uh, this is the model we are initializing and we have two set of sentences over here. The first set of sentences is like the cat sits outside, a man is playing guitar, the new movie is awesome. The second is the dog plays in the garden, a woman watches TV, the new movie is so great. Now let us get the sentence level embeddings over here. So this is as simple as calling model.encode by passing the sentences and also converting the to tensor is equal to true. So we, do, we get the embeddings for uh, both the sentences, right? Basically the list of sentences. So for each of these sentences, we'll get an embedding, right? Then uh, we are computing the cosine score or cosine similarity between the embeddings over here. Okay, for each of these sentences, right? And then when we print the, uh, you know, cosine scores over here, right? So uh, we are printing the cosine scores or the cosine similarity of the embeddings between these sentences over here. So for example, the cat sits outside, the dog plays in the garden, it has a cosine score of 0.45, right? A man is playing guitar, a woman watches TV, totally opposite sentences, very low cosine score. So this sentence, the new movie is awesome, the new movie is so great, both the sentences are very similar, so you get a high cosine score. So actually you can generate sentence level embeddings using sentence transformer. And once the embeddings are available, then you can actually compute uh, semantic similarity and you can do a lot of other things. Now, what is this sentence level embedding which is being computed over here? So the sentence level embedding which is computed over here for that they make use of BERT. Okay, so BERT is a transformer. So here they use something called as sentence BERT, uh, sentence embeddings using Siamese BERT networks. Now let us look into the paper. Okay. So the idea here is very simple. You have two BERT transformers over here, right? BERT encoders basically. And there is a pooling done on this BERT, uh, you know, embeddings which are coming from the BERT uh, as output from the BERT encoder output, right? Here they do mean pooling, right? So you have sentence A, which is given as an input. You have sentence B, which is given as an input. So you get a a mean pooled vector u and mean pooled vector v for sentence a and sentence b over here, right? So once you get this mean pooled vectors, what you can do is that you can do a softmax classification on, right? You are sentence vector for the first sentence or the sentence embedding for the first sentence, the sentence embedding for the second sentence and the difference between them over here, right? So this is used for classification, which is given for a softmax classifier and they have used the SNLI dataset. Okay. Now what is this SNLI dataset? It is the Stanford natural language inference corpus. Now, what does this corpus have? 
It has a collection of 570k human written English sentence pairs which are manually labeled for balanced classification and the classification labels are like entailment, contradiction and neutral. For example, if you have sentences like these, right? A man inspects the uniform of a figure in Southeast Asian country. The hypo uh, and uh, you know, uh, so the judgment over here is a, uh, the hypothesis is man is sleeping, right? It's a contradiction. These are not related to each other. Now, if you look at another sentence pair, it is like an older and uh, younger man is smiling. Two men are smiling and laughing at the cats playing on the floor. So this is neutral because you know in both of cases you have two men and they are smiling. Okay, like this there is contradiction, entailment, neutral. So these are your classification labels. So over here each of these sentences are given and you know the classification labels over here. So in this way they could actually uh, train you know this encoder in such a fashion that it gives out very good sentence embeddings. Okay, so this part is a Siamese network. Okay, it is a Siamese network because both these encoders share the same set of weights. Okay, so these two birds have tied weights. So they have the Siamese network structure over here. So this is for the classification purpose. Now if you just do want to do a similarity between two sentences, you can modify the same thing over here and you can model it as a regression problem by, you know, once you get these u and v vectors, you can compute a cosine similarity and then you can model it as a regression problem over here. So this uh, sentence bird architecture can, uh, you know, perform things like classification as well as this thing. So it has been trained on the various uh, data sets and it has been able to generate very good embeddings at a sentence level. Okay. So one interesting point is that previously for sentence level similarity, in BERT, what they used to do is that, uh, you know, the most commonly used approach is to average the BERT output layer known as BERT embeddings or use the output of the first token, the CLS token, right? But over here, you need not, uh, what they have uh, known is that this doesn't really give good results from their experiments. So they've developed SBERT or sentence BERT, which has a Siamese network architecture, okay? which enables that the fixed size vectors for input uh, sentences can be derived. So what they use is that they can use either um, similarity measure like cosine similarity or man, uh, Manhattan or Euclidean distance. Semantically similar sentences can be found. And this is quite fast compared to, you know, the traditional way of extracting just uh, embeddings from BERT. If you want to learn about BERT, this is an excellent resource for uh, learning about BERT. So this is uh, an article by J. Alamnar. Okay. So here he's explained what is BERT. He's explained what is self-attention. He's explained how sentence classification is done with BERT and a lot of other things about uh, BERT. Okay. So BERT is a transformer architecture. So J. Alamnar is given a very good illustration of BERT over here. So you can read more about, you know, BERT over here. Right. Now uh, we looked at the sentence transformer uh, model over here, right? So basically you have a BERT encoder followed by, you know, mean pooling and then you have either a softmax classifier uh, for, you know, classification or cosine similarity for regression. Okay. So now let's go back to see over here, uh, how does our embeddings look like? So the embeddings over here for each sentence will be a 768 bit vector, which is the mean pooled uh, vector coming out of BERT. Okay. So now let's think of some other practical application, which we can do with uh, say sentence similarity. Okay. So then I looked at the ARXIV data set. Okay. So what is ARXIV? So ARXIV is a free distribution service and an open access archive for a huge number of scholarly articles in the field of physics, mathematics, computer science, uh, quantitative biology and so on. Right. So in Kaggle, you have actually a ARXIV data set. Okay. So what does this uh, data set uh, contain? Okay. So this data set has, you know, a repository of 1.7 million articles with relevant features such as article titles, authors, categories, abstracts, full text PDFs and more. Okay. So now uh, if you look at this data set, uh, let's just look at the metadata. Okay. So what does the metadata contain? 
okay the original data set is rather it is huge 1.1 tb but you have metadata for each paper so in this metadata you have an id you have who is submitted the paper who are the authors of the paper what is the title of the paper right additional comments uh, you know categories to which this paper belongs to versions right and also a digital object identifier okay so for example the metadata looks something like this okay this is the paper so you have an id over here for the paper you have who is the author of the, like who submitted this paper who is the author of this paper okay of this paper basically what is the title of this paper you know uh, at the abstract of the paper okay so i thought that shall we use sentence transformers to do some kind of similarity finding given an abstract okay you have an abstract you have this metadata of many other papers so you want to find out which other paper has a similar abstract so that is what i wanted to do over here uh, to demonstrate the use of uh, sentence transformers okay so for that what i did was because this was scientific text i took the skybird okay the allen ai skybird and because this is not really present in the sentence transformers it will download this particular model okay and uh, uh, by default in the sentence transformer the maximum sequence length is 128 so because abstracts could have 300 to 400 words so i have given the maximum possible sequence length which is uh, 512 okay so then what i do is that uh, as usual i uh, you know import all the necessary libraries over here right so then uh, to actually process this uh, snapshot json i downloaded this data set and then i use this particular uh, you know uh, notebook over here in uh, kaggle okay because this notebook has some methods to actually pre process this metadata and convert it into a pandas data frame so i have used certain code from over there on how to read this metadata json file and basically uh, i just pull out the papers which are in the uh, year 2020 okay so i pull out the id i pull out the title abstract and categories and i create a pandas data frame now the and uh, so for the year 2020 you get close to 26558 papers and from the metadata when i create the data frame i get like this id title abstract and categories so in the categories you can see that uh, so many categories are present for a single paper it could be uh, present across multiple categories so what i did was i pulled only the categories related to machine learning so from this uh, kaggle notebook i can look up over here and it says that cs.lg is machine learning so i just filter on uh, papers related to machine learning and i create a uh, new data frame okay then i extract the sentences from uh, the machine learning uh, uh, what you call the data frame from the abstract column okay so the total number of papers are 1077 and if you look at the sentence list if you look at the first uh, element in the sentence list it is the abstract of the first paper okay in, in this 1077 papers and uh, you can also access the id like this of the paper but this is of the second paper basically right so now what i do is that i have to convert this sentence list into sentence embeddings so for that what i do i uh, you know basically um, yeah, do embeddings is equal to model dot encode and i send the sentences list because this was scientific text i have imported over here the allen ai skybert skyocap uncased bird model okay not the paraphrase distilled roberta base model which is present in the sentence transformer but i have uh, taken this allen ai skybert uh, this particular model and also the sequence length is more because we our abstract has more number of words okay so i do that over here and then what i do is that you know i just call model dot encode sentences list right so the time taken to compute this on cpu this is not on gpu because it also required 10 gb of uh, memory and my uh, uh, gpu in my laptop has just 6 gb of memory so i have uh, done it on cpu and it has taken around 273 seconds to compute embeddings for 1777 abstracts okay right so how does this uh, embeddings looks like so if you look at the shape of embeddings it looks like 1077 rows and each row is a 768 bit embedding okay 
basically 768 uh, dimension embedding which is obtained as the sentence embedding okay what i do next is i compute the cosine scores among uh, between the embeddings itself so what happens is that each document is compared to itself as well as the remaining 1076 documents or the abstracts over here okay so then what i do is that i uh, print out what I do over here is that in the cosine scores, uh, what I uh, do over here is that I, uh, you know, uh, for the cosine scores which are uh, for between the same document, the cosine score will be obviously one, right? So I make it over here zero and then I try to get the maximum cosine score. Okay. So it gives the most similar abstract to the abstract over here, right? to your reference abstract over here. So I loop over through this cosine scores over here, right? And uh, in this way, I get, you know, uh, for example, I get over here, I print over here is like, okay, this is a paper, right? The reference paper, whose abstract is this, right? Whose title is integer programming and cell of temporal relation classifiers. No, now uh, based on this similarity between the other abstract, it says that this is the most similar uh, paper the title of the most similar paper and this is the most similar abstract so basically i find the most similar abstract from that i find what is the title of the paper and the paper id over here so if you look at over here there is temporal relation classifiers as a term over here he is also uh, here also there is some temporal uh, relations over here so that is why it says both are similar may not be true over here if you look at the abstracts but then i also have seen some things like uh, you know uh, so over here, a hybrid deep learning architecture for privacy preserving mobile analytics. And if you go down here, the most similar is federated learning with cooperating devices. So in both cases, in privacy preserving this thing, you have federated learning. So probably that is why it says that both these abstracts are quite similar to each other. Uh, one more interesting result which I had seen was on, uh, you know, uh, ReLU activation. So here the non-parametric regression using deep neural networks with ReLU activation function is the title of this particular paper. And this is the abstract. The most similar abstract to this is again the role of neural network activation functions where they talk about ReLU. So it is giving quite similar in certain uh, cases, right? So uh, again, this is uh, something which talks about latent uh, digital data allocation. Um, so the other abstract which has been pulled out also has something called as latent uh, dist uh, distributions. So it kind of finds similar abstracts. So we had seen a use case of how to use sentence transformers to compute, uh, you know, similarity between abstracts of AR XIV papers. Uh, in the same way, sentence transformer can be used uh, to get sentence embeddings and then perform different tasks like uh, semantic textual similarity, clustering, paraphrase, mining. So I would be working on these use cases as well on uh, maybe the RxIV data set or some other data set and I'll be making videos on the same. Uh, if you like such video, please press the like button. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please also press the bell icon so that you will get notified whenever I'm creating a new video. See you in the next video. Bye for now.